Well, hello there. My, it's been a long, long time. I bet you guys thought that I was quitting the project. I'd given up on the motorhome, but that's not the case. I'm definitely going to finish this project. Um, yeah, so hey, you really do want to ring that bell icon because I am sure that the YouTube algorithm is not going to show you my videos unless you've told it that you definitely want to get the updates. So please do that. And um, I've got a lot of great content that I've lined up. So I've actually got a lot of videos that I'm going to be releasing here. This is my full-time thing for the next couple of months. So let's see how far I can get uh, towards completing uh, the motorhome build. Now, something that I never told you guys is that the motorhome uh, stopped starting. It wouldn't, it wouldn't, you know, I could crank it and crank it and crank it and it wouldn't turn on. So when I got it, of course, I drove it down from Seattle, but then sitting here in the driveway for a year, I don't know what went wrong. So let's get back to work on the motorhome, shall we? So my dad is here for Father's Day and uh, we're trying to get the engine started. Now, normally I've been able to run the motorhome whenever I need to move it or to kind of pump up the airbags after they you know, bleed down from sitting for a while. But right now the engine won't start and it's just been sitting too long. I think the gas in the tanks is getting to be about a year old now. And so my dad, the, uh, the expert on carburetors because they were you know, the technology of choice in his day. <laughs> uh, he's helping me uh, diagnose the engine. So we took the, what is it? The, um, the, that's the donut air filter box off the top of the engine here. And I replaced the, the final fuel pump, which goes in that housing right there. What's it called? Fuel filter. The fuel filter, excuse me, the, the fuel filter that goes right there. And now we are going to replace this, uh, crusty, dirty old air filter. We just went to the auto parts store and got that, but I do have a small problem. So right here, on the uh, on the housing for the air filter, there's this. Um, where's the hole here? There it is. There's the hole right there. See that big old round hole? That receives this rubber grommet right here, and you can see this is just cracked and broken. So I'm not getting a good seal onto the pipe here, uh, the hose, the the vacuum hose through that. So. At the auto parts store, they don't have this part. It's not even listed, even for a 403 Oldsmobile uh, Toronado engine. You know, they, they don't even have GMC motorhomes listed in their computer at all. But uh, even he found the engine. The guy found the engine, but he can't find this part. So I need to 3D print this part up, and then put all the, uh, the everything else back on there. And we even got some. Where's that? Some starter fluid here to try and get it going. Although uh, I don't think this is going to help that much if I'm really not getting. A good fuel into the engine, but maybe. So let's see if we can get this motorhome started. You know what we forgot to get? Tell me, what did we forget? Gas stabilizer. Uh, I might not need it. Okay. Here's the original damaged grommet. There's my 3D printed grommet installed. There's the opening. So I think this will work quite well. And I do think that this is even going to be a higher temperature than this butyl. This is butyl rubber. It's a really low temperature. So uh, the TPU here should work even better than stock. So let's get this installed. This is the distributor, <clears throat> rotor, and cap. And my dad had me pull this off so we could take a look at it. And how's it doing, Dad? Worst I've ever seen. Yeah, Horrible it's... corrosion. Well, I guess I got to go get this replaced as well. All right, so here I am up under the, the motorhome, and you can see the fuel filter there. And you can see that there's only fuel to, like, right there. It's like there's hardly any in there. Um, and this is after cranking on the, letting the thing crank over and turn over for, like, 30 seconds. Like, I'm burning up my, my battery, and it doesn't fill up this container with fuel. So, clearly, the fuel pump is bad. All right, so once I ordered it, it only took, like, a day for the, uh, mechanical fuel pump here to come in at Napa. That's the box that it came in. And this is just a really simple, uh, simple pump. So the cam, there's like a lobe on the camshaft. I think it's on the camshaft. It might be on the crankshaft. Anyway, that lobe just presses that lever arm up and down and that little slight movement um, causes a diaphragm to move back and forth. And that diaphragm has a one-way valve attached to it. And so it just pumps the fuel. And probably the diaphragm got a hole in it, which is why the the pump that's in there failed. So yeah, anyway, I considered putting uh, electronic um, fuel pumps into each of the tanks to feed the carburetor, but uh, you know, that would require me to wrap my head around electronic fuel pumps for carburetors. And I don't know if they would be the same pumps that I would use when I eventually install 
the EFI system. So I'll, I'll be putting an electronic fuel injection system into this motorhome. And uh, I don't want to have to do that work twice. So $25, two bolts, and two hoses or three hoses later. This is just going to be really easy. So cheap and easy, that's what I'm going to go with. All right, here's the fuel pump that came out. And it looks a whole lot newer and less covered in oil than everything else under the hood there. So uh, obviously this has been an ongoing problem. Maybe it has something to do with the alcohol and the gas destroying the diaphragm, something like that. Uh, you know, the gas today that we have was not designed uh, for these old engines. So these old engines tend to suffer, especially the carburetors and all that. But I have a bigger problem. See, can you guys see the problem? <laughs> I don't know what this line is for. Everything else is identical. The uh, the pump action arm there is identical. The flange is identical, so it will bolt right in. So what do I do? Do I just stick a piece of uh, of tubing over this and close it off and just use it with the with the two? Uh, I don't know. I guess that's what I'm gonna have to try. Man, they nickel and dime me to death, don't they? This fuel filter, this little you know end cap, and this uh, hose clamp cost me fourteen dollars just now with tax. And this whole pump just cost me 25, so half the price for a few pieces of plastic. I should have just 3D printed a cap out of TPU, but I don't know how uh, resistant to gas TPU is, and I didn't want it to fail, so yeah, I spent the money, but man, it just makes you resent the auto parts store, doesn't it? Nice. Well, that worked really good, didn't it, kiddo? Yes, yeah, this is probably the only motorhome with torque steer because <laughs> it's front-wheel drive. But now that I've got full power, I was able to figure out that I get torque steer. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, I'm pretty happy. So now it's time to get back to work uh, on the actual like living cabin living area. Is it, is it turned on from downtown? Well, you need the key to turn it on, don't you? Yes. Yeah. But you know, the sun is out. It's way too nice of a day to just be working on the motorhome. Let's go for a bike ride. Okay, buddy, you gonna help me pump this up? I, I can't do it. Let's do it together, ready? Okay, what's that pressure at? So flip that lever. Okay. Flip this lever, just this lever. Don't take it off, flip just this. Just move this part right here. Okay, let's go that way then. All right, look at the camera, buddy. All right, we're on our way to the river, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be fun. Let's say hi to mom. It looks like your new truck? Yes. Does our truck have tires that are that big? Yes. It yes. does? Pretty big, huh, kiddo? Yes. A lot of fun going down these hills. Unfortunately, we have to ride our bike all the way back up them, don't we? There's a motorhome. Huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think ours might be better when it's all said and done. No, it, it's, it's a city bus. <laughs> it's a city bus? Yes, That wasn't a city bus. But look, here's a cool trailer. How'd you like doing that, Dax? Good. <laughs> it, it looks like Granddad's trailer. It looks like Granddad's trailer, it's true. Almost there. Look, they're doing construction. This is the Vancouver Riverfront. Apparently, it's a bunch of Portland money trying to expand the city. I go here all the time, Dad. Do you go here all the time? Yes, I do. We came here the other day when it was sunny also, huh? Yes. 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 Here we are. Having a good picnic. Down by the river. Down with a, by uh, the bay. Bay. Back, Back to, to my, my home. home. I, I dare not go. Or if I do, my mother would say, have you ever seen a fly wearing a tie? <laughs> <laughs>
Who? Down by the bay. Fish no, the shape of the it, it looks like a it looks like Stonehenge, but it's like a rough outline of a fish skeleton. Oh, creative! And it looks like a it looks like a salmon, I think. Hmm. Look, kiddo, there's a barge. Hi. There's a jet from the airport, and there's an Amtrak train crossing the river. And we're home, yay! Spider? I just went right through a spider web. Do you see that, Dax? Yes. Well, that will do it for this video. Uh, I'm really happy that the motorhome is running at, you know, it's fully running. So I think it's time maybe to go get this thing inspected so that I can get it licensed, plated, uh, all of that. Um, maybe. Although there's just so much work to do. Uh, it doesn't even need to leave the driveway anytime soon. So tune in next time. We're going to um, take the rails off the outside, the, 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 the trim piece, to try to, you know, seal this thing up, get it waterproof. Um, so that's a big job. And yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.